Hello everybody, I'm back with another video for you today, and I wasn't going to cover the final cards that were revealed for the expansion, but I figure, why not? <laughs> May as well just make it a, a full thing. And honestly, I was so excited by some of the cards that I saw here, uh, by the design on display, that I just felt like I have to talk about this. I have to share this, and you know, we have to have another day to, to think about this stuff before the expansion itself drops. So. What have we got? Well, let's just jump into it. We've got Were Rat. This is the last monster unit. 5 for 7. Order. Beast. Reset this unit's power and spawn a number of rats in this row equal to the amount of boost it lost with a cooldown 1. At the end of your turn, consume a unit to the right. So, kind of an engine working similarly to how Vran Warrior with Arrakis Behemoths worked in the day. Uh, back in the day, I should say. Uh, if any of you were around for that, you're basically getting this engine which consumes stuff and creates extra swarm units which you can then do stuff with. Kind of a similar concept there. Uh, of course, with this you've got to worry about row stacking a little bit. Um, if you're going to spawn a bunch of rats in, in, in a row, you're going to need to, you know, maybe you want to boost them up and stuff. But maybe you need to actually eat those or, you know, find a way to, you know, not play too many of them and not lock yourself out of units. Uh, that would be very important with this card. Obviously it synergizes with things like Morvid and the uh, new Chimera card, which actually could be pretty strong with rat-focused decks. <laughs> Just because you've already got like Plague Maiden, maybe Karantha Plague Maiden, and then now Were Rat if you play Chimera. And there's another card that could even spawn Chimeras, which we'll get on to talking about, uh, which, you know, could be pretty, uh, pretty good. Maybe this sort of big rat beast swarm archetype will actually be okay. You can immediately consume a unit with this, make it very uh, beefy. Of course, you might play into then a bit of uh, you know tool removal before you get the order effect off. So a little bit of risk reward on whether you're going to want to do that or not. But yeah, this card's pretty interesting. Obviously, five for seven is not good in terms of points. So you really would need to get a lot of value out of creating a bunch of rats in order to make this viable. So you're definitely thinking this is only good in a deck with Morvid, Chimeras, and maybe even other Swarm-focused cards like Yennefer, Bone Talisman, etc. Um, but in that case, yeah, I could kind of see this, see this, seeing some play in like a Mega Swarm deck. Not sure it would be the most competitive thing ever, but it's a cool kind of archetype nonetheless. Now, let's talk about the new category of card. We've got Locations. These are artifacts, kind of similar to scenarios in that they are actually spawning units and doing stuff while being artifacts. And interestingly, these are resilient artifacts, so they're going to carry over uh, to the next round, which is pre like a pretty bizarre concept, right? We've never really had artifacts that carry over, and I'm not even sure... It might have been possible to do that at some stage. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I've never experimented with it, if it is, when A Rush was a thing, but I think that was only units. Either way, whatever. This is a very interesting idea, right? Uh, I don't think it carries through the whole game. That one, I mean, unless it's a new type of resilience, but then it would be gain resilience on deploy and at the start of a round or something, whatever. So it's just one round. So if you play this round one, you get it round two. If you play it round two, you can have it round three. Uh, and basically have an order effect. So here the order effect is move a unit from your opponent's graveyard to the top of their deck. Uh, so you can put a bad unit, a bad unit, for example, on top of the deck uh, in order for them to be bricked or, you know, for you to play a Vilgefortz, Tibor, whatever it might be. Or you could put a really good unit that they played earlier in the game and try to steal it with Cantarella. That might be a bit risky. Um, you know, maybe you can swap your cards with theirs and try to steal some of their good stuff. But in addition to that, order effects, which you can use with the resilience to kind of pick the right moment and the right round to use the order effect, in addition to that, you also are playing one of the four units from this expansion. You know, the Witcher Adepts, the Witchers, the Mentors, and the, uh, well, the Alchemist here in this case. So a lot of different options there, a lot of flexibility. You know, do you want to brick the opponent? Do you want to get some points with the Witcher Mentor? Would you rather swap a card from, you know, each player's deck, etc.? Uh, so... Yeah, you're probably, of course, going to most of the time want to take some of the better, stronger options, so you're not really going to ever pick the, uh, you know, four provision card here. It's a bit redundant to have sort of the weaker uh, cards be a part of this effect, and you will probably find that they only end up ever being used for maybe one or two of the options, and especially in a deck, maybe even only one option that actually synergizes with your deck, but I think that's that's not a bad thing. 
Um, and they were saying on the stream that it kind of is like as if you're able to play three copies of a bronze again, right? This can act as your third copy of a Viper Witcher Alchemist, or uh, just a Viper Witcher if you want to really brick the opponent up. Honestly, this is probably one of the weaker location cards, I want to say, just because I, I, I don't know. I'm still not completely convinced on that new Nilfgaard archetype. We'll have to see it in action. Uh, it could be quite good with some of the changes that the faction's getting in general, some of the buffs, but not completely sold. But I think some of the other ones here have some very nice potential. Uh, kind of hard to calculate how much you actually get from this order effect and whether that's worth it, you know. I don't know, poss possibly. Next we've got Stigger Castle. This is Square Tells one, and again it's spawning one of the, you know, one of the guys, and of course the order effect is a bit different, moving three allied units to the other row instead of, you know, doing any deck manipulation stuff. Is that a good effect? Uh, again, I'm not sure how to calculate the value on this one, that Probably if you're playing a very movement heavy deck with a lot of engines, I think you would throw this in here because it's another engine and getting that movement for your own guys will probably be useful in some uh, some situations. So yeah, I think that's basically how you got to look at this. If the order effect is going to be useful for your deck, uh, then very well, may well be worth putting in there. It is eight provisions, which is kind of expensive if you don't get too many points from that. But you know, if you're playing like sentries, maybe you can play a sentry and immediately activate the order, immediately get three points from it. Uh, so that could be kind of decent, and then, you know, uh, you get... I don't know, maybe this one's not super good. It's kind of hard to uh, to say. You want to be definitely getting something nice from the order effect, or a bronze card that's really nutty that you want a third copy of. And here... Not sure, not sure I really want any of these. <laughs> Maybe another Cat Witcher could be nice, or a Cat Witcher Mentor uh, for some big long round value, but yeah. Yeah, not 100% sure on that one. Let's go to the next location. It's Hern Kaduch, uh, which is the Skellige location, and this is again, same effect, uh, with order heal adjacent units by three. So, potential of six points if you can somehow set this up. A little bit finicky to make work, potentially. Um, but obviously it has some synergy with itself, you know, the units you can deploy actually will damage themselves. And, you know, you're thinking you're probably playing bear witches with this, right? Who damage themselves by three, damage an enemy by three. So if you play one of those guys next to this, and this already plays one of those guys, heal them both, six points, plus eight, plus eight. 13 provisions for uh, 24 points. <laughs> that sounds a bit broken, I'm not gonna lie. That does sound quite busted. I feel like that could be the new totem for Skellige in a way, right? This card, uh, spawning a Bear Witcher, maybe another one, and that's sort of maybe one of your round one commitments or pushing something like that. Could I could see it, I could see it. Potentially, if you get six points from this and a Bear Witcher, that's quite scary for 8 provisions, I'll say that much, guys. Even if you get 3 plus a Bear Witch, I think this card's okay. Maybe even good, because um, Bear Witch is already looking like a really good card. So, yeah, this one looks pretty playable, I want to say. Of course, you don't have to use the Resilience in the, uh, the Order effect immediately as well. You can also save it for Carryover, maybe you play it round 2, and then you have the option to use it to push or bleed or when you're being bled, and then you can potentially save it for round 3 where you have another bear witcher or whatever to, to gain the value there. So that's that's really nice of bear witchers, I think. That's the main card that benefits from this heal effect from the looks of things. Next we got the Northern Realms location. Uh, again, spawning the guys. I kind of wish there was a little bit of... I mean, it kind of makes sense, I suppose, to have all of these doing similar things, but... Uh, I do love the flavor of this as well. I just want to say the card art, the, the like, you've got these like stronghold, like I guess these are all witcher strongholds, right? And where they're like training up the witches and stuff. That's like really cool flavor wise, I think. And with this art as well, it's, uh, yeah, that's pretty wonderful. Um, but yeah, this one seems pretty good. You get a three point boost for your deck. That's kind of considerable. That's definitely worth three provisions, right? So, um, yeah, then you've got five provisions to pick your poison of whatever you want. I guess you're probably going to play the carryover witcher uh, with this sort of setup. Uh, unless you're doing like a mega shield witcher, whatever, griffin deck, I don't know. Like, 
uh, any of that stuff. But yeah, uh, is it the Witcher Mentor? I think it's... Oh, you can also play the, the, the normal Witch is pretty good as well. God, the names on this are so confusing, right? You've got the four-point guy who, like, locks himself and does crazy stuff. You can take that guy as an engine. Or you could take the carryover card that gives you two strength on one of you guys. So I think those will be pretty good options. And buffing in deck by three is pretty nasty in Northern Realms. I think you can get your Ansei's boosted up. This might, like, you know, maybe you don't even need to play Shield Wall anymore because uh, you can just boost everything in deck with Erland and uh, this card and maybe some of those, those guys that uh, pull stuff out. I don't know. Maybe you just play both Shield Wall and. <laughs> boosting a deck. I'm really excited for carryover guys. I love carryover. Yeah Carryover's great. So that's gonna be uh, pretty exciting to play around with uh, Gonna resurrect the almighty all god northern realms deck. I think on this new expansion. Let's go to the next one Salamandra hideout this one again. The art is just so flavorful. It just feels really cool and like having these new it's like just this whole new mechanic right these resilient order effects that you can do little things in combination with a certain play it's not going to be mega broken or anything but it gives you a little bit of spice uh, which you, which every faction has some access to i'd love if they expanded upon this i really that's what i really hope they would expand on this idea and like have more locations don't just don't just do it with with what you let don't do what you just did with evolving cards and defenders come on give us more don't just do six locations, one for each faction. Give us three locations for each faction. Print some more locations in the future. Like, whatever themed expansion you're going for, have another location that does something different. Like, come on. And support lots of different archetypes with these locations. This is a great way to, like, make an archetype better. You get the three copies of a bronze, and you get that little order effect to spice things up as well. So a lot you could make uh, possible with these, I feel, without them even being oppressive or too strong, right? Um, yeah. I mean, even with scenarios, you could print more of those, but they're a bit more crazy and powerful and oppressive than a card like this can be. So we'd really like them to just kind of expand on that a little bit instead of just saying, okay, we print one of each for each faction and then we're done with that idea. Done with evolving cards, never doing evolving cards again, never doing locations. Like, come on, spice it up. Give us some, like, seven provision evolving cards with devotion. Why not? Just make it, make, make some crazy things happen. Um, that would be really nice, I think, adding a lot of uh, of these. Like, they're really cool mechanics, but they're just so underused and not, it's, you know. Anyway, little rant over. <laughs> uh, the self-poison support is here with the Salamandra hideout. The order effect on this one is really good, I think. Move a poison from an ally to another unit. That's, that's worth quite a few points, probably. Um allows you to re-poison a unit that you've, you've already poisoned, so maybe you can do this on the Abomination, for example, take the poison away. But more importantly, you can give the poison to an enemy and then play a poison in the same turn, killing a unit immediately. So this is kind of like old morale effect. Uh, whether or not that would be super strong, I, I just, I kind of see it being good, right? It allows even a very cheap poison card, like a uh, you know, fist tech trafficker or something to turn into to turn itself into this powerful uh, you know card that can kill any unit your opponent plays. So that seems pretty powerful to me. Just having that instant panic button destroy that unit, poison, so it's over. Uh, no counterplay really to that, uh, apart from veil, I guess, and, and you know, defender whatnot. Um, so yeah, seems pretty good. Again, if self poison is good, if poison is mechanic and syndicate's good, this card you'd probably play it in it, right? It just seems like another engine, you know, you can take the Abomination or the Failed Experiment and then of course you can get the extra poison proc. And lastly we have the Dol du Lock, which is the monster one. It's of course spawning all the units again from monsters. Uh, the really interesting one here is Chimera, I think, and maybe Succubus. It might, uh, it definitely makes Succubus easier to trigger and set up, so you might now consider uh, Succubus a bit, a bit more. Uh, you can have three of them in your deck effectively, makes it much more likely you'll draw one earlier in the game and then allow you to do stuff. And maybe you can play even Succubus alongside Chimera in some kind of a hybrid consume, not actually playing hybrid, but you know, some kind of mashup of consume and swarm. And then you'd have options there in terms of whether you play a Succubus with this or you play a Chimera later on to get big value with beasts. But yeah, I think this, this is probably best in a deck focused on that Mega Swarm, so you get a third Chimera, basically. 
uh, and then the effect gives you two drones, so two points, and moving highest power unit to the top of your deck. So a nice little bonus if you play it in round two on a bleed, uh, can you know find your big card for next round. And yeah, of course I guess you might want to play this with V, but I'm not entirely sure which <laughs> uh, which of the units that you're spawning would actually help that archetype. So I'm not sure you'd want to play this card there. That that might actually be a little bit of a trap. But maybe you just find that Fuka, for example, is enough value on its own in order to, you know, to actually be played and get the drones and get the V to the top of your deck. But yeah, I think most likely this is support for basically uh, a swarm deck. And of course you get the two drones, that swarm synergy, getting units on the board, etc. So, god, I'm really excited about these locations to do. They're so thematically just great, right? Like, just makes, it just makes me very happy. Uh, I think I think thematically they've done a pretty good job this expansion. Pretty excited for all the flavor that this one's bringing and uh, yeah. Looking pretty fun man. <laughs> I'm excited to try out all of these new archetypes. It's going to be a lot of gwenting I think the next, you know, few months. Unfortunately, we're not going to get an expansion for a while after this one, but uh, I think there's more than enough here to keep us entertained for a little bit. So, with that being said, smash that subscribe button, as they say, uh, to, you know, get notifications about my uh, my upcoming decks and such that we're going to be doing tomorrow. Video tomorrow. Exciting. New cards. Yeah. And then Cyberpunk. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, stuff's happening. Exciting. All right. Have a great one, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.